Hey guys, welcome to the XP Pen animation class. My name is Sebastian, I'm an animator and illustrator here to show off the biggest and best from XP Pen, their Artist 24 Pro. This is their top of the line, no limits, premium drawing tablet with a beautiful 2K display that shows 90% of the Adobe RGB color space, 20 express keys, two dials, and an adjustable stand. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple bouncing ball animation with this massive pen display. So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. I make tutorials about animation, primarily using the program OpenTune since it's completely free and open source. You can make as many animations you want with it, commercially or for personal use, and the program is very powerful and unlimited in what you use it for. Without further ado, let's just get started learning how to use the program. And I'm gonna start with the basics. So I'm gonna take the pen from my favorite pen holder on the right over here. Man, I just, I love that. Um, I could probably go over some settings first that I have for my tablet so you guys can sort of see how I use it with OpenTunes. So let's open up those the tablet settings. Okay, so right here I middle click assigned to the first pen button and right click assigned to the back. That's because I like to use middle click to move around the canvas to pan around it. Um, my pressure is set to something not too hard, so I don't want to press down too much on the tablet. Because sometimes when you, this one doesn't have a laminated screen, and sometimes when they have a matte finish over the screen, you don't want to dent it. So I just have it not um, set to something where I have to press really, really hard. Here are my express keys. So the first one is V. That resets the view in OpenTunes. R for the rotate tool. Now these may not be exactly what they are in OpenTunes, but I changed the OpenTunes shortcuts to accommodate simple keys on my keyboard. We have brush and eraser set to K3, which is this button right here. Control Z set to the one with this little nub right here so I can always feel it and see um, where the undo key is. I have Control Y right under that. I do that less often, but still necessary. Select tool. The geometry tool, this tool is C, it's for um, line art when you're editing editing the curves of line art in OpenTunes. I set that tool to be C. For the keys on the right side, which I don't use as much, I did um, control C, control V for these two, that's copy and paste. Some coloring buttons, so fill bucket tool and paint bucket tool. And then I also did a switch monitor button. Um, I think that was by default, but I left it there because I found it useful. For these buttons right here, I did add new frame, which is alt D, the delete key. And for these, I haven't assigned them yet, but um, otherwise it's working great. And you just have so many, so many buttons that if you don't use them all, that's actually a good thing because it means you have a surplus. Animation programs usually have a lot of shortcut keys. So I'm so glad that this tablet comes with 20 of them and two red dials, which I have set to zoom in and scroll frames. That's really, really useful. Let's hit okay and get out of here and start drawing. I'm gonna go to my sandbox project that's what it's going to be by default when you open the program. And I'm just going to make a scene called Artist 24 Test. Okay, let's hit Create Scene. Now that we're in the program, I'm going to hit Control and Tilde to go full screen. This screen has a 1440p resolution. That's 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels, which which allows us to spread our windows out um, very wide and open tune. So you can have things that are sort of small from a distance, but since we're so close to this tablet, um, since it's a drawing tablet, we can have those windows be small and just have a lot of drawing space. And we don't have to zoom in as much, which is awesome. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hover over to this frame right here. I'm going to right click, new level. We're gonna make a tunes raster level, okay? Then I'm going to go to the brush tool. Um, that little window that appeared there, that's called auto save. If you hit Alt S, which brings up the OpenTune startup, you can set the auto save. I set it for every five minutes when I'm working seriously, just because this program is open source and it's not commercial, so it can be a little buggy. But for now, I'm just gonna set it to 10 minutes because we're not working on anything too serious. So I just grabbed the brush tool and started um, playing around with the brush, seeing what I like. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of smoothness to it, maybe about three. We can do that right in the tool option parameter. However, what I find about the default brush in OpenTunes is that it's kind of, it can be laggy and it doesn't look that great. So what we're gonna do is hover over to raster, right here, tap this, wait for that to load. Then we're gonna go down and select 
the pencil. These are the default rest. These are the my paint brushes that were imported into Open Tunes, and yeah, these look a lot better and they feel a lot better. They actually feel a lot more like just drawing with a regular pencil. So yeah, I like to use these brushes more. Wow, I really wonder what we should animate. Um, I've been so excited to do the tutorial and try to animate something, but now that we're doing it, I don't know what I want to draw. So let's see. Well, since we're just getting acquainted with the program, let's start with something basic like a bouncing ball. So I'm going to draw a floor right here for our bouncing ball. Come up next to the frame I just created and draw so we can create a new frame. Then I'm gonna take this on the first frame that we created, the first layer, I'm gonna take this and drag all the way down. This is the layer with our floor and um, this one will be the one we have the bouncing ball on. Now, although I know a lot of you probably aren't used to animation programs having a vertical timeline. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually go and switch to a timeline view that is more familiar. So now you can see that these that these columns are just layers, but um, they're just named something different in OpenTunes. All right, so now we have column two, we'll name that ball. And we'll name the first column floor. Perfect. Now let's go to the ball and we can draw our first frame. Go back to the brush, brush tool. Accidentally undid our naming. <laughs> we have to select the raster brush because I think we selected it on the floor layer. But we didn't select a raster brush for this layer and this I actually I actually also like this paintbrush tool quite quite a lot this paintbrush raster brush let's go to the pencil ones we had before scroll somewhat down I think they're up here actually so this one is a lighter pencil um, it's good for sketching I like to use this a little bit heavier one so I can define some details but I can still lightly sketch here's this one as well just you have a wide variety of things to choose from but let's actually choose this lighter one so our lines don't get too hard and we can always change them in the future. I'm going to start by drawing our ball using mostly my whole arm and elbow. Just drawing what, and then undoing, seeing what I like. I think I like this shape and I can kind of fix that. I'm going to grab the select tool by hitting S or this button on my tablet, which I assigned it to. Otherwise, you can just go over here and click the mouse cursor tool. Go over there. I can just drag it, manipulate it put it in where I want it to be. Let's go back to the brush tool. The one thing I like about the XP Pen drivers is that they allow you to have a function for switching between brush and eraser, so I can just use one express key instead of having to use two, which is very convenient. All right, so that's our ball. Let's go to the next frame. I actually assigned this switch mode to switch to flip frames or scroll. So we're gonna put that on scroll. I'm going to put the other one on flip frames. So now when we scroll this wheel, it allows to flip frames. The way you do that is you go to your express key settings, go to the dial, and you see I added a function called flip frames. So we click on that. Um, if we wanted to make, to make that function, all we have to do is go to keyboard and then select the left scroll and then assign the scrolling to the left to a key that flips the frames back and then scrolling to the right to the key that flips the frames forward. So I'm gonna hit okay. We have to go to open tunes to check which buttons are assigned to previous frame and which which button is assigned to next frame. Let's go to configure shortcuts, hit frame. So next frame is X and previous frame is Z. So if we set that up, on one of our dials, then we should be good to go to flip frames. Let's go to the next frame here. I'm gonna right click, hit activate onion skin so we can see the frame before. You can see it very lightly here. I'm gonna add, just kind of trace over this one because the ball's not gonna change too much in shape from this part into the next frame. Select that, just drag it down just a tad. There you go. It's okay if it's not perfectly round right now. We can always fix that in the second pass. So now I'm gonna draw a ball that's a little bit, I'm gonna erase this because I don't like that shape. I'm gonna draw the ball that's a little bit longer, a little bit stretched out, but we gotta make sure that if we stretch it out, 
vertically, we got to thin it. We got to make it a little thinner horizontally so it maintains its volume. That's good. Let's resize it a little bit just to make sure we're getting the volume correct, like this maybe. Let's see what we got. Okay, very good. I'm going to just drag these down a little more to push the animation along a little bit. Let's go to the next frame. Now we're going to hit one of the extremes where the ball is flattened out and on the floor. There we go. Remember, when you go to a blank frame, just by tapping on it, you can just draw in order to create a new frame. Now we're going to create a frame where the ball is leaping off of the ground. That's a, actually a very good shape I got right here. Let's go with this. Make sure we're maintaining that volume. There we go. So here's what we got so far. Then we're going to kind of trace that middle frame. I see that it's a little small, so let's make it bigger. This one, is this one, I think this one needs a, actually, we'll leave that one. The resizing looks pretty good on that. And we're really just going to copy the first frame. So I'm going to, I usually see these little nodes I deselected. Those are the nodes for the onion skin. I'm going to go over to the first and second frame and select above the regular nodes. This is a regular node down here. If you go above that, you can set reference ones that won't depend on where you're currently looking at, which is pretty cool. Let's just draw over these because these are going to be generally the same. Oh, I'm on the wrong frame. Hit that undo key a bunch. When you're when you're working on open tunes, always have auto save on to some sort of capacity because I have lost a lot of work due to certain bugs. Sometimes the program will be overloaded and you really don't know when it's gonna happen. So please always save your work. So we're gonna select all our frames by clicking and dragging. Right click, reframe, let's go to fours. So we get this. So we can stretch this out a little bit and add some in-betweens. I'm going to take this little hour you see here. This, we're going to click on it. It's going to turn white. We're going to drag it over to the end. If you don't see that arrow, you can just right click on the frame you want it to end at and set stop marker like that. You can drag, click and drag it wherever you like. I'm going to click and drag. Select these frames. A little tab will appear. We can drag that tab back. There we go. So let's play our animation in a loop. And we can see we got a little... See, our ball bounce looks a little bit sad. It doesn't look as snappy as we might want it. So let's actually speed it up a little bit. Let's select all the frames again. Go to, and we're going to reframe it to twos. We're going to drag this stop marker over here so we can loop it. Hit the loop. And let's see. So yeah, we might need a little bit more wind up for that bounce. We're going to add a few more frames when the ball's in the air. And then we're going to in between this part where it hits the ground. Got to zoom in right here so we can get a little more technical. And let's go in between this. We're going to delete these nodes that we have here. Select the frame, select frame two, hit the node behind it and the node in front of it. So we can see those frames. If you don't really see them, what we can do is edit our onion skin. Let's go to file preferences, onion skin. I want the paper thickness to be, let's try 10. This is a very light brush. So it's not going to show through a lot. Yeah. It's not really going to show through too much because of the lightness of our brush. We can also change the color of our onion skin if that if that might help. Let's maybe change this to a higher visible color like green. Double tapped it, this came up. Let's change it to green, like a very vivid green, and change this to a very vivid red. See what happens there. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Um, oh, it wasn't not showing up, it's just that I haven't created a frame yet. Yeah, if you don't create a frame, then the onion skin won't show up. Now we can see our onion skin pretty good. I'm just going to draw in between these. As you can see, the workflow can get very, very smooth when you have all these express keys at hand. And they're very nice to have. Let's see that. So we got a little more smoothness than that. All right. We wanna, I want to add one when it's coming back up to smooth ends. So I'm going to delete these onions. I'm going to delete the onion skin ahead. Go back here and set a reference onion skin so we can see in between these ones just start drawing in between them okay I'm gonna make one frame in between 
these two as well. Take away that reference one. So we're gonna have to stretch this ball a little bit. So you might wanna avoid resizing and selecting your drawings too much because by doing it right the first time, you can develop your skills as a draftsman by placing things right and not having to place it somewhere and then move it since, you know, in traditional art, in traditional art, you don't have these tools to move them. Um, it's not the biggest crime to do it in digital. However, it will help you practice if you try to draw it in the right place the first time. So let's see, is that working? So this looks more like a teardrop and we need to even out these edges. Now I'm gonna make another drawing right here in between this and this so we can smooth this out. Let's just make it somewhere around here. You can see that it's kind of coming up. Above all, you want to maintain the volume of your subject, making sure that you're not drawing it too big, too wide. All right, there we go. All right, now let's actually reframe this again. And so we can select the whole thing, reframe to twos. So our timing is reset. And we need to move our stop marker so we can see the whole thing. Drag it to the end, hit loop. So I think what we need to do is actually add um, a few more in-betweens. We need to add an in-between right here, between this and this. So I think we needed a frame. Originally, we needed a frame to indicate the contact with the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see the distance between here and this reference frame. So I'm going to get rid of the other onion skin ones. So this is about these tops are about an inch and a half away and this right here is about an inch and a half away so I have to move this up because what we want to do is have it move further down as we go so move this up and we in between we want the frame where it's low the proportions have to be a little movement and then it goes a little movement a little more movement a lot of movement and then plenty of movement so because it's accelerating as it's going down so let's in between this frame take away that reference frame back here draw it like it's going very fast so it's even skinnier and even longer I'm gonna grab that rotate it just a tad and there we go maybe we can make that let's see compared to this yeah, we need to make it a little taller because these are the same size. There we go. A little taller, maybe a little bit skinnier. Now let's see. Let's select this and reframe it. Twos. Drag the stop marker and let's see. There we go. And our animation's a little looking a little more bouncy. That's good. I'm gonna grab this frame, just drag it down a tad. Let's get that speeds up things all right now let's put it back on twos see what it looks like all right that looks pretty good now we're going to I'm gonna grab these these frames right here I'm gonna speed them up just a tad by clicking them dra clicking and dragging and then taking out the exposure like this let's see yeah did for this frame this frame that one We're putting those on ones and the rest can be on twos so that's how you make a basic animation in open tunes next time we're going to be seeing how we can add color and export our animation to a video or a gif file Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been awesome. And I look forward to teaching you X fans more about this free animation software, OpenTunes. That's all from me and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.